Blog Talk Radio. Greetings, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to today's show. As always, I'm your host, of course, Faith, and you are hanging out with us live on today's show. Hey, everybody. Hey, Christina. Hey, Mia. Hey, Gas. Hey, Jake. Hey, everybody. Um, yes, Shaza, co-host, will be joining us later. Yes, welcome, welcome, everybody. As always, everyone, I'm glad that you guys are hanging out with us live on today's show. I'm definitely looking forward to taking your calls as well. So I'll go ahead and give you the calling number, which is 515-602-9735. That is the number to call. Remember, if you are calling from outside the U.S., you need to dial the U.S. country code. I know you all are from all over the world, so remember to do that. Well, today, y'all, we are in for a treat. We have a special guest. Miss Susan Stasi. That's our guest today. Um, Susan works in the area of gender equality and human rights, and she is our special guest today. She has, um, yes, I'll tell you a little bit about her. She has a nonprofit based in California, in the U.S., where I know some of you all are. We know we have a lot of listeners from California, so you have one of your own in the house today. Um, showing us some love and um, she also has a team in Cameroon where they hold workshops in rural communities they're working on menstruation you know um, in the area of menstrual health and hygiene and in general they work with a lot of issues related to human rights yes but you know we're going to talk about that today and more with Susan and I think she is here with us hello Susan are you here with us? Can you hear me? I am. Can you hear hey, me? Hey, Susan. Yes, Hello. I can hear you. This yes, so I exciting. can hear you. Welcome. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I know. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> yeah, I've never, I've never done the radio, uh, you know, show um, via phone. <laughs> I really welcome. <laughs> You should be on the Time magazine. First time women, you know, the first time. (laughs) First one. (laughs) First women. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Welcome. You know, as I was reading your profile, I was just like, Susan works in all our favorite topics, you know, menstruation, menstrual health, gender equality. It's just awesome. Yeah, oh, but welcome. You. It's a pleasure and an honor. Um, let me just, you know, send out some love to all our listeners. I want to give you all a big shout out, all of you, you know, where you're from. We have so much love from Scandinavia here in Denmark, where we are based. Thank you, everybody, for all your love and your support. All our listeners in Sweden and Norway, big up to you all. Thank you so much. And, of course, our American listeners, you all be showing us mud love. And our British listeners, you all are absolutely the best. And we cannot forget our listeners in Ghana and Nigeria and Kenya and Mali and Ivory Coast and all over. Um, So we're not going to leave you all out. So, you know, you know who you are. Indonesia, yes, how dare I forget. You all be showing us my love. And Australia. Okay. So thank you, everybody. Y'all, we're going to dive right in. Otherwise, you're going to run out of time to ask all your fantastic questions. And we want to, you know, we want to really, you know, want to get in. So Susan... Um, I don't know where to start. You're working in so many areas. You know, I was okay. looking a little bit about your. I was looking a little bit about your work. Yeah, I know. And I also saw the STEM project. I was like, she's doing oh all the God. stuff we love. 
so we don't know where to start. But I think we'll just start right from the basics because, you know, our listeners are from all over, from different walks of life. And sometimes some of them wonder, what's all the hype? Why do you all talk about menstruation like it's a new thing? You know, why are you talking about gender equality? And so I think we'll start right there. I think. Let's start yes. by why is gender equality important? Why should we well, be talking about this? <laughs> yes, that's a really good question, isn't it? <laughs> well, you know, um, as I mentioned, I'm in, in America, and in America, yeah. they think of gender equality as jobs and being on the, the board of this company, this organization, or, or being in the limelight in the political environment. But where I'm working, um, it has a completely different meaning to um, gender equality is, is, is much deeper. And it, it just really goes down to, um, <laughs> you said it, menstruation. Um, that's the, <laughs> the first thing um, that sets us apart. Thank goodness for that. Um, and <laughs> it's um, about... <laughs> The men, I'm sorry if, if there's any men listeners, um, but you wouldn't. Oh be yes, here they're here and up. they're already writing. <laughs> yes, and they're already writing. Is so is gender equality a concern for us? <laughs> I think that will be your next question, but just go for it. <laughs> really? <laughs> go yeah. for it. Yeah. Is there, so they were like, okay, so is it, is it? Should we be concerned about it? You know. So anyway, guys. Yes. Jack, Behave. Yes. We have a guest in the house. Okay, mind your manners, Jack. <laughs> Go on, Susan. <laughs> Jack is well, one of our very popular listeners. Yeah. Well, good. Good. <laughs> well, um, yeah. I'm really... Okay, now we got to get serious. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Again, where I'm working in um, um, the rural communities, I'm working with impoverished uh, women. And um, they don't even know about menstruation, and it is really appalling. Um, and it's the primary reason why girls are out of school in the Sub-Sahara. And um, I recently presented um, to a conference back in D.C., um, and we were talking about the Sustainable Development Goals. You know, they're the global goals. And none mm-hmm. of, there are 17 of them. They wouldn't be achieved if the men don't get comfortable talking about menstruation because it's an integral part of all of our global goals. And um, so (laughs) the men in the audience were a little bit (laughs) surprised that I started (laughs) off. (laughs) Let's talk about menstruation. (laughs) Yeah, because we're talking about gender equality, so they were like, we might as well just go since, you know... (laughs) Y'all need to stay, you know. Yeah. Right. Because right. Susan also teaches boys about puberty and, you know, human rights and respect. So I didn't read her whole profile, of course. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a show. Okay, y'all. So, you know, bear with us. We are building up. Right. Okay. Susan, go on. Right. <laughs> so um, my first, uh, a couple of years ago when I was, I go uh, for three weeks to Cameroon, uh, where I'm, I have my team that's working on the ground. Um, and um, I did a train the trainers with these um, teachers, and primarily men. And um, I said I had developed a puberty pamphlet um, for, to teach the girls about menstruation, their body changes, um, the feelings, that, you know, that we go through. And um, uh, one of the male teachers raised his hand. He said, what about the boys? And I said, okay. So I went back and I did create a puberty pamphlet for the boys. And last year when I went back um, to Cameroon, we put on a workshop at a school for the deaf and um, the boys, I didn't realize I was going to be having this (laughs) workshop. You have to have plan B always on the ready. And um, I was shocked at the questions from the boys. They just, Mm -hmm. um, they they thought puberty was for girls, um, and they're raised uh, to believe that uh, their culture is such that uh, the male is the dominant person in the family, um, and um, sexual abuse, gender-based violence, and all of that is um, acceptable. 
and um, it is not. And so we teach we teach both boys and girls about gender equality, but more than that, human rights and respect. Because if we don't teach them respect and that they each have human rights, it's a God-given right that we've been given, um, that they will, they will just proceed just like they have um, for generations. And um, that's, that's our, I mean, we're going in at the ground level. I thought I was going to develop a school. <laughs> they have enough schools. Yeah. They need toilets. They need toilets. They need water. Over oh, yes. Of the school. Yeah. And have, wash. Have now we're going toilets. into wash. Yes. yes. And that's why wash is so important. And I was, as you were talking, I was just thinking about menstrual hygiene. You know, it's almost right. impossible, I think, in my perspective, and this is my two cents, to, you know, to have those two separate. Because, you see, as you right. were talking, the toilets came up, water came up. All these things will yes. always come up because it's very important. Menstrual hygiene and, you know, whatever, menstrual products, menstrual health, they right. all go hand in hand. You know, yeah, yeah. And, and you were touching on the hygiene. Um, maybe we can just dive into that a little bit because I think okay. maintaining adequate hygiene during menses right. in conditions where you right. don't have toilets, you have very yeah, little exactly. water to no water, can be quite yeah. challenging logistic-wise as well with you doing right. this work. And just tell us, you know, um, okay. if someone is listening out there and they're working in this field, what are some of the pointers you would give them to deal with this? Well, like I say, um, when I first went um, over into the sub-Sahara, I didn't realize the complexity of the problems. And um, mm. so now what we do is we, I, I take with me, I have volunteers around America that make the washable sanitary pads. I created a pattern, um, and I take with me these pads. And we distribute, we go out into the rural communities labor camps, refugee camps, into the prisons, and we distribute these washable sanitary pads. But we do more than just that. We have classes where we teach the women how to make their own. And part of that, that instruction uh, that we talk about, uh, giving them the solution for handling their menses, but it's more about um, this is – this is um, a natural phenomenon. It's um, because some of them are afraid. Um, they don't understand that hygiene is critically important to prevent diseases. So we talk about how it's so important for them to maintain their hygiene, to be sanitary. Um, and then, of course, we have the problem of the lack of toilets. Um, so... Um, we are we distribute dignity kits as well, so it gives them a a bit of where they can have they can take their um, pads with them in a bag to school, um, and if they start their period where they have that, it's got a little plastic bag in there, so they can put the soiled um, uh, pad into that, and then take it home to launder in their privacy but um so we definitely yeah. stress the the hygiene portion because um the disease the infections and what do they use currently rubbish they they have yeah. they can't afford <laughs> to buy the pads yeah so, and you know um, when i was in india i was i was um i was in india um doing some scoping work there and i was um you know talking with outreach workers about you know the issue of menstrual you know menstrual menstruation menstrual hygiene different products and so on right. and what came up is the taboo the taboo and all the issues associated with blood because it's also cultural, you know, issues associated yeah. with blood, you yeah. know, not just the taboo or the myth, right. but also people have such a negative, um, yeah. I don't know what to call it, you know, effect, you know, perception of blood, you know, being right. evil or exactly. something like that. So what yeah. happens yeah. is when I was talking to some of these girls, about, you know, about like the rewashable pads, they said, yes, because you, we use them, but then we hide them because we cannot hang them yeah. up and we cannot wash them in public. 
So when they hide yeah. them in, in cupboards, under the bed, you know, in these very unhygienic yeah. places, the pads don't dry well. So it was causing a lot of infections, actually. So, I, I, you know, yeah. when you said rewashable pads and then there's shortage of water, so this was actually a big issue because they were not airing them, right. they were not washing them, you know, hanging them outside yeah. in the sun to dry. So, right. you know, they were getting damp and sanitary. Yeah. What can be done, you know, if they're using these right. products, what, what can be done to address right. that? Mm. So what I did is I redesigned our pads so that the liner mm-hmm. looks like a washcloth. Mm-hmm. And so you take out your this liner that's a wash washcloth it looks like, and it dries fast. It doesn't look like it's a pad liner, um, so that takes a care of a portion of it. But you've addressed a very serious problem, and I it it's not just in India. It is definitely through the Sub-Sahara, and why did I start in the Sub-Sahara? I raised my hand to offer to help, <laughs> and the rest is history. <laughs> so um, I, you know, yes, I never, know. Calling. I never know if you're I'm calling. going to, to somewhere else. I have no idea. <laughs> but You uh, know, the world is a village uh, now. I keep saying it's a village. We are meeting. Oh, and my God. You know, yes. you know, we're connecting, yes. yeah. Yeah, right, but right. I think, yes. Oh, you know what, Susan? Our co-host, yeah. Shaz, is here. Shaz, you want to just jump right in and say hello to Susan? Yes, hello, Susan, and welcome to our show. Thank you so much. It's a real honor and pleasure. I just, I'm, I'm delighted. Yeah, the same here. Yeah. Shaz, we were, here show. yeah, we were just talking... Yeah. Shaz, we were just talking about um, how mm-hmm. work in Cameroon and some of the challenges and benefits of the project. And we were just talking about the mm-hmm. you know, menstruation hygiene. So she was telling us a little right. bit about that. And, um, yeah. and Susan, so let's, um, if we could just continue. So how can menstrual hygiene be promoted? Because when, as you were talking, you were saying that you talk about these issues and, you know, they're taboos, they're stigma. People may not want to talk about this because they're like, yes. you know, people don't even want to say the word. You know, I, I don't know right. if I'm allowed to right. say it on this show. Even women part, <laughs> maybe we might be. <laughs> right. Right. No, we exactly. might be plugged. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think we'll be chastised for <laughs> mentioning it. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> The, the uh, police are going to be coming and <laughs> yanking us off. Um, so, um, <laughs> what, <laughs> so what I, I feel um, with Rose, what sets us apart is we are educators. Um, we're, I'm mm-hmm. a teacher, and my, my colleagues are teachers. And so um, we're all about education. And so that is the only way I feel that um, we can make a change in any of the the cultural traditions, which are embedded, uh, you know, generations of these traditions. But if we educate, and so we offer a solution. We offer the solution uh, to give women dignity during their menstrual menstrual period. Um, We give them the knowledge of how to, to manage their menses and how they can make their own pads. Um, so then we also have life skills classes where we, it's all about empowering the woman to, um, so, so we are developing self-sufficiency. We have a mentoring program. We are just going to be launching, um, um, it's a literacy discussion group um, that the women can meet. I have a vocational center in a rural village where they, it's a safe place for the women to come, and um, so we can continually be educating them on how they can live a better life. Um, and wh- how are the men, uh, how do they feel about it? Well, we have to be very careful because we don't want them to feel like, oh, you're taking away the woman that's over here doing all the work so I can be over there playing. Um, no, it's <laughs> Um, it's, it's giving them easier ways of doing things, um, preventing disease, and um, having 
um, the knowledge of how to make a hand wash station, a tippy tap, um, so that they can prevent disease, um, how to have safe water, um, agricultural um, soil remediation, how they, because these women are uh, the workers in the fields and how um, yes, they are. the process. And so it's, it's very, um, actually, it's a broad swath of, of um, areas that we touch on, but it's all about education because they don't know. And so we are, yeah. we just go out there and um, so this puberty pamphlet, um, we really just talk about um, the changes in your body um, and that the blood flow, this, and, and the, the women just have so many questions um, because they, they were raised with that fear of, of um, that is um, evil and it's, uh, you know, that they're going to bring um, bad fortune to the village or something, you know. And so um, mm-hmm. teaching them that um, this is a natural phenomenon. And then I have yeah. had women that ask me, well, I don't have a period. I keep getting pregnant. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> I've got an idea. <laughs> the calendar, oh the God. calendar. Uh, Christina in the chat is saying the calendar, the calendar. But Christina, yeah. women's bodies are not a machine, you know. You know, our bodies don't <laughs> run like an average, you know, bus schedule, yeah. like my friend always says. Yeah. So you can't just say this is a calendar. <laughs> but fine, you know, you're the expert, Rose. Take it away. She says, yeah, you need the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> and the guys are, uh, Jack is also saying, yeah, we also need to know how to read the calendar as a pre-warning tactic. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. And so, um, you know, again, I, I really include, when I, because I'm Caucasian. I am, I'm as white. I'm actually uh, Norwegian and Irish. And <laughs> I stand out uh, well, like come home. Ball. You can just come hang out here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would love it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I stand out like, a, I mean, a bright beacon light when I'm involved, when you go over in the Sub-Sahara, <laughs> because where we go, um, you know, there's um, only probably less than two <laughs> individuals that are Caucasian, and that would be me. And, um, okay. but, you know, um, they, they are the most wonderful um, people I've ever met. Um, they are so anxious to learn. And how do we teach? These women are illiterate. So, you know, you talk about the calendar, and it's no joke. That's what I do. I take a calendar, and I tell them, look, it. what you want to do is you count. Your period starts, mark on this calendar, and then when it's finished, you mark that again, and when it starts again, then you mark the calendar again. Then after a couple of months, you know your cycle, and then you can count back, and you can pretty well guesstimate your fertile period. But the one girl that asked about, that had five children and said she didn't um, menstruate, um, this, is, this happens when your health has been compromised. If you don't eat mm-hmm. um, a nutritious diet, um, in your lifestyle, mm-hmm. you you know, um, they're subject to um, so many diseases. And um, so being taught that you need to improve what you eat, um, you know, your health is important. It has an effect on, on all of your body. And so, um, again, it's, it's really incredible. I, I had no idea that I was going to get to have this, um, these rewards in my life because I'm not young and um, it is true, a true joy working um, out in these communities where they have been so isolated. And then also we support the deaf, the deaf population. And um, mm-hmm. they are the Is that also with the menstrual um, project or yes. with a different yes. project? Oh, yes. It's also with the menstrual, okay, okay. 
absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you think that because they are deaf, they don't menstruate? Mm. <laughs> I mean, no, because you, know, you have you have different projects. You have the STEM project. Yeah. Yes. And you have. So I was uh-huh. wondering where the deaf project, whether it's based on the STEM or on the different projects you're working on. But right, okay, I just okay. wanted to be clear on that. Yeah. Right. Mm. Right. So. Um, we have a, um, a school for the I also have another, we are, sorry, Susan, oh, I also no have problem. another question. Like, it's very interesting that you um, work with the, like, deaf people, like these girls. Yeah. I, I guess you will come into it, but, like, how is it, like, working with them? Like, you know, try to explain the right. thing with the ministerial and, you know, pets and how they can, you know, express, express themselves. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. It's so very yes, it's a, it is very mm-hmm. difficult. Um, I I sign um, American Sign Language, and um, when I'm in um, Cameroon, because it's a bilingual country, um, we actually had um, because it's French and English. I um, I je peux parler français, so um, that wasn't the issue, um, but they use a French sign language, which is slightly different than American sign language. So we actually mm-hmm. had just an interpreter mm-hmm. that interprets, but um, I, um, I'm very involved with the deaf population here, but again, like I say, it's American sign language, and so, um, but I just got involved with the deaf um, just a few years ago, and I just um, I absolutely love helping that population. They're the invisible disability, um, mm-hmm. and they're the most vulnerable. Um, so coming in March, I will be traveling into Uganda this time, and I mm-hmm. will be met by a woman who's deaf. Um, she was the founder of the United Deaf Women's Association of Uganda, and we'll be traveling to two schools for the deaf, teaching the girls about menstrual health and hygiene. Um, and I'm just, I'm just thrilled um, that we get to do this. And um, it is not yeah. easy. None of it is easy. Yeah. But, um, hey, what would I do no. <laughs> with my life? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I, I want to backtrack just a little bit, if you all will bear with me. Yes. As you were talking sure. about menstrual health, you know, and the diet, yes. I was thinking about, you know, I mean, women, we're all different. One person bleeds lighter than the other. You know, some women have very, very heavy blood flow. And a lot of people who are in this income bracket, you know, maybe less than $5 a day or less, um, they are not, they don't have the luxury to buy painkillers for cramps or they don't even check themselves for low iron. And they could be losing a lot of blood. And um, Maya is asking how much blood is actually lost. Maya, I'm not sure, but last I checked is about 30 ml or 80 ml, but it depends. Uh, Maybe Rose can answer that. Yeah. Because I was thinking, how um, do you deal with that? Right. In this kind of, yeah. Well, but um, I am not a medical professional. However, Mm -hmm. what we do is, again, um, we explain that if they are having continual Um, extremely heavy uh, periods that they most likely need to see a medical professional. We are not the medical professionals, but what we do is we like to guide them in what we recommend would be the best um, solution for addressing this issue. Now, one girl last year when we were putting on this workshop at a Catholic church, oh, my gosh, there was about 50 women and girls, and this one girl raised her hand, and she said that she had what they call bites or the cramping, and um, she said that she went to the doctor, and the doctor told her that if she had sex, that the the bites would go away, and here the priest is sitting over to the side, and I asked the girl, "Um, (laughs) was this a male doctor? Oh, wow. And she said yes. <laughs> oh, no. oh, oh, was God. he also was going to provide the cure himself? <laughs> yeah. I said, please. This is terrible. Do not believe oh, yeah. it. It is not the truth. Oh, my gosh. I was, mm-hmm. oh, and, and, and please, and then we also, because, again, 
in developing countries, we have early marriage, early pregnancy. These are so extremely dangerous for the young girl. Her body is not ready physically to have um, to have uh, babies, and um, the mortality rate is high. Um, so um, we encourage them, and, and they they've shown studies have shown that if they get their education that they are less likely to marry early and um, they will wait to have children um, at an age that is appropriate for your body um, because it is extremely dangerous. And so we teach them about that. Um, and it's um, we don't get into um, FGM, which is another... Mm-hmm. Um, uh, very Do you difficult. touch on FGM as well? We Do you work just, in that area as well? Because um, we have not, our, the areas that we've been working in have not at this point had um, a high population of those that practice that um, tradition. Um, okay. It is, it is very serious because um, many of the young girls um, die from loss of blood. Um, mm. And um, it, it, it's, a, it's a horrible tradition. Um, and, um, you know, I mean, we can talk about so many issues related to the gender. Um, we don't have any boys that get FGM or fistula or, you know, on and on um, because this is a gender problem and um, so it's again it's teaching these uh, women and girls why it is dangerous and to tell them rather than um, you know going against their established traditions but explaining why and the value of an education they again don't understand that an education will allow them to get employment where they can make money. Um, So we teach uh, vocational skills and we empower Mm -hmm. them um, with those, those skills. And um, And while, yeah. And while you're talking about the vocational skills and the other skills, you, you also, you know, you also providing as part of the Rose Academy, I think if I'm correct. Right. Maybe you can touch a little bit on the STEM club. Why did you set this up? Why is it important, you know, to have this STEM club? So um, there's a serious uh, gender gap in um, technology Mm -hmm. and particularly, Mm -hmm in the um, developing countries, uh, I should say sub-Sahara, because India, I think, uh, and those countries are more inclined to recognize that the values of technology and more of the girls that are getting into the STEM. Um, but in the sub-Sahara, um, you've got multiple problems. You've got problems with Internet access. Electric power, you kind of need that <laughs> to run a computer. Yeah. Um, and um, so we, we're going into extremely impoverished uh, rural communities um, that lack water, sanitation. They, nine out of ten people in the, in the rural communities practice open defecation. Um, and it has an effect on climate change and the environment um, and uh, so that's a whole other issue. Um, but in the larger um, cities, um, we have our tech woman who is a, a STEM. Uh, she teaches technology at the high school. And then um, her um, NGO is getting girls into STEM. Um, so I'm actually developing um, a vocational center at the School for the Deaf Um that um, will be encouraging the, the deaf students to study computer technology because they can gain, um, it, you know, a more of a higher income 
generating from it as opposed to um, shoe cobblery or um, learning how to put on weddings, which is what some of those <laughs> vocational schools teach them right now, yeah. how to decorate their car, how to, to dress up for their wedding. I mean, it's, it's just ludicrous. Um, but so yeah. we, um, I actually um, am a computer user, and um, this last trip I gave two workshops on a beginning Photoshop and taught these girls about graphic design. And they... Hey, go, Susan. It. Photoshop expert in the house, man. No, no. Y'all, this is so important. Um, this is so important, everybody. You know, when we're yeah. talking about STEM, I mean, women are using technology designed by men. And earlier, you know, right. one of my older shows, and this is for, you know, for our chatters, we had a, a guest who works in STEM, and she was actually giving us examples of, you know, botched um, products that have harmed women because they were never tested on women and they were never researched yeah. by women. So this is very important. You know, there's a car company, she gave an example, where, you know, they didn't uh-huh. test the body bags on women. So when the women oh, crashed, my. it had a high yeah. impact because they were right. testing them on, on men. So that is why we're emphasizing on STEM and women getting involved. And, you know, yes. we have a joke in Kenya. We say that, you know, if women designed cars, we would have a place for our handbags, you know, <laughs> so because we know what we need. So this is important, yeah. guys. It's not a joke. We need more That's women true. because we, we are using this product, and they, we don't know where yes. to put our handbags. We put them under the chair. Right. You know, the baby's right. diaper bag. We put a, you know, not oh, a, yeah. a flat screen. We need a diaper bag handle, you know. Yes, so yeah. These are some of the things that we are trying to address right. by getting more women in STEM. And that's just my two cents, right. y'all, okay? So, you know, oh, I'm season. glad. She's teaching Photoshop. <laughs> And she's getting the deaf girls involved in the STEM, and now they're going to design some hip, you know, deaf machinery, man, <laughs> coming up. <laughs> well, so, you know, I let's thought. watch this space. <laughs> anyway, Susan, we slowly to... have to wrap up. What did you say, Susan? <laughs> oh, oh, okay, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, when I first went, uh, I went to the Republic of Congo, and I thought I was going to be developing a tech school for technology and the schools that I taught at for the two weeks didn't have electricity. <laughs> yeah, you had computers and nowhere to plug them in. And, and you know, I'm also trying to set up some STEM thing, you know, club. And when I tell people the challenges, Wonderful. I'm like, it's not just a computer. Yeah. We need the sockets. You have to first have the yeah. infrastructure, you know, before you bring the computers, you know. Come on, guys. You right. Know, it takes time right. to do this right. stuff. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yeah. it is really important. Yeah. Um, so, I, yeah. yeah, I'm just really glad that you are a proponent for the, the STEM technology. And, um, yes, it is definitely, um, and I'm hoping to do that uh, likewise to develop this tech centers in Uganda at these schools for the deaf mm, excellent. and um, to give these yeah, girls cool. um, job skills. Yeah. So um, perfect. Anyway. Yeah. Susan, you will not believe it, but we have a few minutes left on the show. Okay. Um, so y'all need to throw in your questions real quick. Just put them all and we'll, I'll just compress Please. them if we have time for Susan to answer it in like the speed of light. But um, yeah, while you put exactly. this together, um, Susan, um, just tell us a little bit about um, how, you know, how the man can get involved, y'all, okay? You need to be concerned. Like okay, you say, also at the beginning of the show. Yeah. yeah. Tell us how the men uh, can get involved, how families can get involved, and communities can get involved, because I really right. think that everything begins at home. But, you know, just tell yeah. us what, what we yeah. can do moving forward, and also tell us a little bit about your work and how we can get in touch with you and know more about your wow. work. Wonderful. Well, they have some really great um, um, organizations that have been developed um, recently, the He for She, um, and... Um, I'm actually involved in the United Nations Association and trying to, you know, to reach out to the men, to, real, to have them realize their voice is, is critically important in promoting um, all that we're doing and supporting that. Because until 
the men can join in the discussion and to teach those other men that are that don't understand about the challenges that uh, women face. Um, it'll con- everything will continue as is. So it's um, get a, get um, don't be afraid to speak out. Um, join any of those organizations that are um, positive. Um, in um, like I say, the he for she. Uh, there are so many that um, fails me right now. Um, I actually have my a couple of my board members that are men that help to cut out the washable sanitary pads, and so they have been fabulous um, in um, supporting everything that we're doing. And um, you can reach me any um, anyone that's interested. You can go to my website. Um, it's roseacademies.org, O-R-G, and it's one word. Um, and my email is susan, S-U-S-A-N, at roseacademies.org. And I would love to um, continue in the conversation. And I'm, I'm actually on Twitter a lot, and then that's at Rose Academies, one word. And um, I would just really enjoy tweeting back and forth with um, these listeners. And I, I'm just um, really um, honored and thrilled that uh, you have this program and um, to be to be included on this uh, discussion that is, is so I'm I'm passionate about it and um, I, I I appreciate the fact that you are as well. Thank you so much. We had so much fun. We've learned a lot. I know you all have learned a lot. So definitely, you've taken a few pearls from today. Thank you so much, Rose. Shaz, would you like to yeah. add, add something before we head out of here? <laughs> no, I'm do you want to add something, again, Shaz? It's 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 very great what you do. And again, like yeah, we actually learn a lot about the people that invite invites in. So and it's 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 really great what you're doing. I mean, thank you, you do a lot thank you. <laughs> different <laughs> projects and different areas. So it's very interesting. Um, so yeah, we wish you. I mean, all the best, all the luck to thank you. your organization. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, I yeah. really appreciate okay. it. Okay, and, and, um, and we hope to yes. hear from you again. Okay. Well, thank you. Likewise. And oh um, yeah, good luck Susan, you're always show. welcome to come back. Yeah, you're oh, yeah. welcome to come back. If you'd love to come back, just hit us up and yeah, tell absolutely. us, hey, you know what, I have this project, or I just feel like yeah. chatting about menstrual hygiene. Yeah. I'll just hook it up. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> okay. maybe when I come back in March, <laughs> end of March. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. why not? Perfect. <laughs> yeah, you never we'll, know. We'll note that down. Note it. Okay. Yeah, we do. So March. All right. Okay. So, everybody, thank you, thank you so much. Um, Susan, an absolute pleasure and an honor. We wish you all the best you. with your work. March is noted. Um, you know, we'll continue the conversation on Twitter world. Y'all can join us over there. We have some really cool discussions going on there. You know, you can like some stuff, comment. Yes. You know, we love to hear what you guys think about these topics. Um, yeah. Guys, yeah. Y'all Absolutely. know what to do now, okay? And, and Jack, yeah, buying the chocolate for your girlfriend and being a pillow, what do you call it, a pillow cushion, absolutely works. That's a good start. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and maybe you can throw in a little bit of a chat and chill, you know, you know, yeah, maybe share something you learned from Susan today, but you can score there some brownie go. points, okay, <laughs> anyway, guys, you know what we always tell, you know, y'all do what you want to do, we love you all, and we always ask you all, whatever you do, make sure you're changing the world for the best, yeah, so bye, bye, everybody, bye, bye. bye. Well, bye. thank you, bye, bye. thank you, bye, bye.